Today on Crazy Performance Repair, we're going to cover a very common issue on the GM truck-based models. Uh, it's very, very popular. Anything 2001 and newer, all the way up to 2015 for sure, if not newer than that. Basically, it's a emissions evap code. There's two of them that will pop up. One will be telling you that you have a large leak detected. The other one will be telling you there's a circuit control issue with your evap emissions. It'll throw an engine light and it's super annoying, but it's cheap and easy to fix and you can do it at home. So stay tuned and uh, we'll get right into it. Right, guys so you can see I'm on a computer here this is actually gonna be my scanner for the day my other scanner I let the battery die and I completely lost track of my charger and my connector for the vehicle and I don't want to sit there and look for it so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the scanner section of my HP tuners you got the key on now we are going to read the vehicle or connect to the vehicle and then read the vehicle and see what codes it has. So I've got the diagnostic box open here. We are going to read diagnostic trouble codes. You can see this particular vehicle has a P0449 EVAP emission system vent control circuit intermittent pending and current. So this code is active. We are going to go ahead and clear this code now. Hopefully it'll stay cleared. I don't know if it will. It might pop up again. Okay, it appears as though it cleared. So I will shut the key off. Now that we know we have a vent control circuit issue, what that means is that there's something that the computer sees, either an open circuit or a short circuit within the vent control solenoid. So it could be anything from the computer all the way to the solenoid, the wires, or it could be the solenoid itself. However, it's pretty much 99.9% .9 of the time. It's the vent control solenoid itself. And the vent control solenoid is actually this small part right here. The rest of this is a valve right here. And then this is like a filter system type thing. And we're gonna go over how to test this and where exactly it has failed uh, and why it has failed as soon as I get this truck in the air. So let's go ahead and get it up and uh, We'll take a look. Okay, so we are underneath the truck now. We are at the back of the truck. You can see I have the differential right here. The vent control solenoid on this particular truck, now they are different from truck to truck or from vehicle to vehicle. This one is actually over here. It's up above the differential and right above the differential. This is an avalanche, 2008 avalanche. And we're gonna get a flashlight up there and show you guys a little bit better view of it. But before I do that, there's a couple different locations that you might have to look. So the newer Chevy pickups or GMC pickups, whatever, they tend to be on the driver's side of the tank. So, so the left side tank, and that's over there. Obviously to you guys right now, it's on your right, but you're looking backwards. So remember that when you talk, talk left and right on a vehicle, it's always from the driver's seat, left or right. So left side of the vehicle, left side above the tank, uh, they are above or behind the tank. They like to hide them there. Some vehicles actually have them in front of the tank. So if you're not working on a GM truck specifically, then you might want to look elsewhere. It does. It is a common failure on all kinds of other vehicles as well, not just the GM truck, but the GM truck is what I'm doing right now, which is why we're going over it. Although some might not call an avalanche a truck, but. Yukon, you know, all, all those GM V8 vehicles, they're kind of, they're all located in this area. Why do they fail? Okay, number one reason, dust, dirt, debris. The front tires are kicking up dust and dirt. Every time you go over dust and dirt, it kicks up dust and dirt. So if you live on a gravel road, you're going to have this failure much more often than somebody who drives in the city. And that's just because you're throwing up dust all back here, all crazy, and there's a filter attached to that thing. So you saw how big that was, the big black box. We're gonna pull this one apart. I guarantee you that it's just full of dirt and debris and that is the source of the failure. What happens is all this dirt gets in there and ends up overworking the solenoid. The solenoid overheats, 
opens the circuit because the little wire winding inside there fails. Sometimes they'll get water in them and they'll crack. Other times it's just a rust expansion thing. Uh, it's it's There's so many reasons these things fail, but the number one reason is dirt and debris plugging it up, making it stuck so it can't move anymore. And that's usually uh, what gives you the code for a EVAP leak, a large leak detected code. So if you have a large leak detected code, this is going to be your most likely culprit. Of course, check your gas cap first. But if, if your gas cap's tight, that's usually a small leak when your gas cap's there unless you leave it off. If your gas cap's good, go back here and you're going to want to check this thing out and I'll show you how to do that now. So you can see this is the box I was just showing you, but this is the one that's on the vehicle. Obviously it's covered in dirt and dust like I explained that it would be. Uh, we're going to have to disconnect this, we'll have to disconnect this guy. Uh, but to test this thing, now there's a couple things you're going to want to do. One is to check this guy itself. The other is to make sure that you're getting your power and ground here. One way to check the power and ground here, if you have a scan tool, you can activate this thing. You can turn it on and off under a functional test, but uh, we're not even going to have to do that on this one because I already know this is bad. I have actually tested this once already. That's all I did. You can see I didn't even wipe it off. I never even tried pulling this thing out. But uh, I did test this and I know for a fact this is bad. Now you can take an ohm meter, you can ohm the two pins that are in here, and if it's an open circuit, you won't be able to ohm anything. It should, however, have some kind of resistance and ohm reading. I do not know what the factory ohm reading is, nor do I really care. Just the fact that it ohms something gives you a indication that it still is working. However, this did say intermittent, so it is possible this would ohm right now. So I'm not gonna ohm it. I'm actually gonna go ahead and take a couple of leads here, push these guys onto the pins. These are pre-made, so they have a male end on one end, a female on the other, and then a alligator clip coming off of it as well. These are really handy to have if you don't have any. I'll see if I can find some to throw a link in the description below, but we're gonna go ahead and get those things connected anyway. Now, you're also gonna want a 12 volt battery source. You can run something from the front of the vehicle if you like. I made myself this personal little LiPo battery pack, and uh, this sits at 12.6 volts with a full charge, pretty much exactly. So, oops, we're gonna go ahead and power this thing up. We're gonna give it a power and a ground. Now these solenoids are a 12 volt solenoid, so you can put 12 volts to them. So let's go ahead and do that. And I have absolutely nothing happening. Now, there are one of two things you should have happening. Typically I would have less light here. That way I could see this thing sparking. Because what will happen is it will throw a little spark off when you're touching it. That's because it's giving it power of course. And if it's throwing a spark, you well or well not hear this thing making a clicking sound. Now I don't hear a clicking sound and it's not throwing a spark. That tells me it is an open circuit and it's not working. If this thing was making a spark but no clicking sound, that would mean inside this box, we're looking at the black wire here, inside this little deal, there's so much dirt and debris that it no longer can move the pintle up and down so it can't really act like the little plunger that it's supposed to to open and close the valve. So let's go ahead and pull this out and we'll take a look at what's going on. Now this particular vehicle, the connection type of quick connect fitting it has here, uh, it is one that you squeeze right here and here, and it takes a little flap and it tweaks it like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect this. Now I'm probably gonna have to push it in and wiggle it quite a bit. If you guys have some kind of different connection or you're working on some kind of other quick connect, you can click the link above over here and I will give you a video of where I went over quite a few different disconnect fittings that you can disconnect. So every once in a while, these tabs do not work, go figure. And you gotta take a little screwdriver here and pry on this thing in order to get it to function properly and come apart. This one is being really stubborn, which of course it is, it's full of dirt. There we go. So now, we gotta disconnect the other side over here. And I'll show you something as soon as I get it off of here as to what I did. Okay, so if you look at this thing, it's quite rusty, of course. But you see there's a center little tab in here. I had to take a screwdriver, put it in the slot of the tab to pry this little tab outward. That tab normally sits in like this here. And the purpose for that tab sitting in like that 
is to lock and keep it from, from being split off of there. So this guy, it sits sliding in this direction and that tab will actually push in against this. There's a drop off here. I don't know how well you can see that on camera, but it'll prevent it from sliding back off. So that is the tab that you got to take care of there. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at this thing on the ground. Okay, so here we have it. Here is the failed unit. Now, this thing has failed in the least common, or the less common of the ways, but it is very common as well. And uh, I'll show you that in a minute. But first thing we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and pop these little tabs off of here. I'm going to take this cover off, and I want to show you something. And you can probably already see the dirt that has fallen out of this thing. And that is the dirt that I'm talking about that ends up making these things typically fail. The, the normal failure. So had this thing not failed the way it did, it would have failed the way it normally would have shortly after. So what happens with these things is they just get filled with dirt. You can see there's like a little filter here, but this filter is not much of a filter at all. So all it does is contain the very large particles from getting in there. Now check this out. Look at that. That's crazy. Look at the amount of dirt in that thing. It's like, it's literally like a vacuum cleaner worth of dirt. That, that is insane. So that is your source of the most typical failure. Now you can see that dirt, it all sits down on the bottom there. And if it goes in the bottom, look what happens here. It comes into this this area and then plugs up this bottom half. Now this one actually failed right here. You can see this big swelled up area. So you can see this one has rusted right here. It's called, it's, it's expanded it really bad. And this expansion is where the failure is on these things. So there's a big steel bar that goes all the way up here, a steel, thin, you know, thin steel bar, I guess. It kind of wraps around this thing. And it, it ends up getting swollen so bad that that swelling pushes against the copper coil of wire that's inside here for the solenoid. And then when it pushes against that, it tears the circuit apart basically and creates an open circuit. So this is an open circuit condition and when that happens obviously it's no good anymore. Uh, typically you can take these things apart. Let's see here. There we go. I see how it comes apart. This little tab here. There we go. And a guy could technically replace just this part. This is the part that actually fails but why would you when you have all that dirt sitting inside of this thing you'd have to take that apart and clean it out as well so there you have it there's this guy you can kind of see I don't know if you can get that on camera or not but there's a spring down in there and that's for the solenoid the plunger that goes up and down inside this thing let's go ahead and grab the new one and get that guy installed okay you guys can see I have you at a different angle now and uh, I did that so you can kind of see what's going on with this little slide tab when I go ahead and put it on there now you, you saw me bend that other tab back so all I did that for was to let it relax when I push this guy in there we go that guy is in place we'll go ahead and plug this in and then I'm gonna show you how this thing actually functions when it works properly so we'll go ahead and hook this up. These are not polarity sensitive, by the way, so it doesn't matter which one you give power and which one you give ground. All right, so here we go. Let's go ahead and touch this guy, and then I'll let you guys listen to what it does. And maybe I'll turn the light off so you can see the sparky sparky, too. So you can obviously hear the thunking of that coming in contact. So I'm going to go ahead and shut the light off and then uh, give, you a look, give you a visual, too. Now that I got you guys alone and in the dark, no, it's just playing. Let's go ahead and get this thing right here. See how it creates that nice, bright little spark? That's what you're looking for if you don't hear the thunk. Like you see, I still got the truck in there. I gotta drop it down, go on my test drive, and make sure the code is actually cleared because I did clear it when it still had a fault. So it may have popped back up, even though I had the key off. Hopefully, hopefully it didn't pop back up. But anyway, if you like these videos, be sure to hit the subscribe button so you can see future ones. And uh, from here on out, uh, like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.